Hi folks, this is the second of three advanced tutorials covering how to customize the iClone Facial mocap system. Here, I'll show you how to use the expression mapping panel in the iClone Facial mocap plugin to rework the default profiles and to produce your own custom profiles for particular characters. But before I show you how to adjust individual parameters, I want to discuss the default profiles. As I said in my tutorial on the Facial Mocap plugin, there are three JSON files which provide default profiles. One is specifically for use with a static camera setup, for example mounted on a tripod or on the desk in front of you. One is specifically for a head mounted camera rig. And there's one which uses Faceware recommended settings. Let's load the Faceware JSON and see this in action. The Faceware JSON has been built to provide expressions which conform with Faceware's own recommended expression set, and this is quite a general straightforward set of facial expressions and bone extents which can be used both with a static camera and with a head mounted rig. It can also be edited relatively easily using the expression mapping sliders on each individual expression, and to be honest when learning to adjust expressions I'd recommend starting with the Faceware JSON file, but remember to back it up first, and in fact please do back up all of the default JSON files before starting to make custom mapping parameter files. Now I'll reload the static cam JSON file so that you can see the difference. So the Faceware JSON file can be considered a general approach, whereas the static cam and head cam JSON files have been much more specifically built for fixed and head mounted camera scenarios. They also use modified approaches to improve lip sync, as well as to help compensate for associated head rotation and feature distortion issues coming from the mocap data. In addition, they have been averaged in an attempt to provide a baseline one size fits all system, which hopefully will work reasonably effectively for most users as well as most characters. These additional technical features make them in some ways less straightforward to edit, as well as to understand, than the Faceware JSON file, but more about this later. For now, let's just get going. So first I'm going to load the Faceware JSON file again, to make this a bit simpler. And I'm going to turn off Preview, so that you can see the individual expressions. Also, I'm selecting the Hide Zero Value Sliders checkbox so that you can see the active sliders more easily. And now you can see that as I change the control name in the drop down list, this switches between the expressions which, when mocap has been started, will be streaming through from Faceware real time. So, as I change the control name, you can see that the sliders are changing too, and that each control name is actually for a compound expression which is built from a blend of iClone's native expressions and bone rotation values where they're active, which are all controlled by the sliders in these panels below. Now, you can adjust any of these compound expressions without preview, statically, and obviously you can switch between any of the control name expressions and simply use the sliders to adjust them to make expressions larger or smaller as you wish. As you can see I still have hide zero value sliders selected but if I want to access all of the available morphs I can simply uncheck that box and then I can literally apply any of the available morphs or indeed any of the available bone values to any particular expression in the system. But it's one thing working on static expressions. It's another thing altogether being able to preview them in action. And since facial mocap is an inherently dynamic system, working on static expressions in this way will only get you so far. You need to be able to see how the changes are actually affecting the mocap when it's running. 
and whilst it's relatively straightforward to modify the brows, the eyes and head animation on static expressions like this, it's much more difficult when modifying the mouth, which is blending many expressions during mocap. So I'll preview and remembering to calibrate of course and I'll make some adjustments whilst doing the live mocap. First I want to change how much the character can smile. So I scroll through the control name drop down until I get to smile and you can see here that there are two expressions which actually contribute to the smile effect and I need to adjust both of these. So first I'll select the left mouth smile Next, I'll select the right mouth smile. And I can do exactly the same for frown. And this is exactly how you adjust the parameters whilst doing live mocap. Now, at this stage, I can imagine a lot of users may be shaking their heads and thinking that this is too complicated, and at first glance, it can be a bit daunting. But for those users wanting to fully modify and customize the approach for particular characters, or if you want to customize the whole system to create a new default JSON, these are all necessary steps which, with a bit of practice, will become much more straightforward. And, in fact, in a nutshell, this is all you need to know about customizing expressions. You can adjust them in isolation without preview, but it's far better to do it with visual feedback during preview. And it's a matter of selecting the control name you want to work on, and then adjusting the sliders to get what you want. So that's how you edit compound expressions and depending on the expression there may also be jaw motion and in the case of the head, head bone rotation to consider, again all of which can be adjusted. So for example if you want the jaw to open more fully, select its control name in the drop down, go through to the jaw panel. and change its value there. Similarly, if you want the eyes to open wider, go through to, in this case, left eye wide. It's a morph which actually handles this. And again, simply adjust via the sliders. And working in this way, you can completely retune the facial animation approach and then actually save out your custom JSON file once you're complete. You can do this for individual characters or you can produce new default JSON files which will apply to all characters if you wish. But working on individual expressions is not the full story since from the control name dropdown you can see that Faceware is using a very specific expression set where, for example, as I showed you before, smiles and frowns are not individual expressions. The system uses two half expressions in each case, which need to be used together to form a whole expression. And it's well worth familiarizing yourself with Faceware's expression set in order to understand exactly which expressions are being driven by the system. And on the subject of which expressions are being used at any particular time, I'm going to open the tracking data inspector so you can see the data as it's streaming from Faceware real time. What I'm going to do now is I'm simply going to smile. As you can see, the streaming data is not just showing smile data.
It's showing a lot more expressions as well as bone rotations firing too. This is because Facewear is necessarily using some seriously fuzzy logic to track features and transpose feature tracking into usable expression data. And whilst it does this remarkably well, clearly it's not quite so straightforward as it might seem, when in this case you'd expect to see the smile values increasing with very little of the motion. Now, the real value of the tracking data inspector is that you can use this for reference whilst adjusting expressions. Because if a particular expression you're making isn't firing sufficiently here, it may be that you need to exaggerate that expression further in the mapping panel to get the results you want. And similarly, if an expression is firing too much when you make a particular facial expression, you can reduce its strength via its sliders in the mapping panel to compensate. And whilst, as I've said, it's relatively straightforward to adjust eyebrows and eyes to get the effect you want, you may find that adjusting the mouth can have negative effects, since so many compound expressions are firing at the same time. This is the biggest reason for working with the FaceWire JSON to practice parameter adjustments to start with, as the mouth parameters in both the static cam and head cam JSON files are using highly modified versions of the FaceWire approach, which break many of the system's recommended rules in order to achieve improved lip sync and to better resolve the lips versus teeth versus jaw relationship. I just want to show you an example of the differences between the Facewear recommended approach, which is handled by the Facewear JSON, and the static cam and head cam JSONs. So I'm going to quit preview and I'll pick a particular expression. So, for example, I'll go to left mouth stretch and I load the static cam JSON. You can see that it's remarkably different from the FaceWire approach. Let me try another one. I'll first I'll go back to the FaceWire JSON and I'll show you the mouse phoning CH. And now I load the static cam JSON. And again you can see that it's radically different. And this is because the way that both static cam and head cam JSONs, as opposed to the FaceWare recommended JSON, uh, handling facial expressions is much more mutually dependent, especially at the mouth. So, to modify either the static cam or head cam JSONs on the basis, for example, making a smile look different, can actually negatively affect many other mouth expressions. Hence, whilst of course you are completely free to edit both the static cam and head cam JSONs to produce your own custom versions for particular characters, please do proceed with caution, especially when editing the mouth expressions in these files. And please do spend time learning how to edit expressions via the FaceWare JSON first. But the most important part of expression editing really is getting this visual feedback as you edit and it's important to not only test the individual expression you're working on, but also test other expressions which may be affected by the single expression edit. So, when you're editing a smile, don't simply test the smile, but try frowning, opening your mouth, puckering, baring your teeth, etc., in order to see if there are any negative effects from the smile edit you've made. The same goes for all other edits on mouth expressions. Make the edit then move your mouth to see how it affects the range of expressions you're getting. Now, this does take time, but as you become more practiced, you will get a feel of how the whole approach works and will be able to edit much more quickly. And finally, once you've changed the parameters to what you want, be that for a specific character or as a new default approach, you can, of course, save the JSON file and then load it whenever you want to use it. And if you've created a new default, be that specifically for the static cam, head cam, or the general facewear approach, you can simply rename it to static cam, head cam, or facewear JSON respectively. But 
As I said earlier, please do back up these default files before starting to edit mapping parameters. This has been an advanced tutorial on editing mapping parameters for the iClown facial mocap system, including Faceware Real-Time for iClown. The next tutorial will cover how to edit the underlying morphs which the mocap system uses in order to improve animation further. Thanks for watching.